Thank you for auditing the Always Positive New Music Review Show, hosted by a French professor who's going to be talking about Scrapyards by Quatica, the sort of compilation mixtape album uh, that, that he just released, I don't know, a couple of days ago. Uh, he's been releasing songs here and there. I've done a lot of research to make sure that he, him is the, is the correct pronouns, so if I'm incorrect, <laughs> I'm just going to erase this whole video, but based on what I saw, that seems to be correct. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Anyways, so I'm very excited to review this project, and I'm going to. But for reasons which I'm going to explain right now, I literally cannot give this the amount of attention to detail that it needs. I listened to the album probably five times, but for reasons I'm about to explain, I cannot listen to this album anymore without sort of making my family life much worse. So I'm going to explain kind of a personal story. Uh, I'm arrogant enough to think that uh, there's enough uh, charisma or enough interest in the way I tell stories to think that even if you're just here to hear someone say what a great album this is, it is, how awesome it is, I will. Uh, but I'm going to be telling a very personal story for a couple minutes here. I don't know how long. If you want to skip ahead, you can skip ahead. I'll change the angle of the, of the camera a little bit so that you don't have to hear a second of this personal story. But here's the thing. So I, I put up the uh, poll on my channel saying, you know, what should I review first this week? You know, because we got Idols, we got Chromio, we got Yeet, we've got this, we've got a whole bunch of stuff. I still haven't done the Mick G album. A lot of things I want to get to. And I didn't even want to include Quatica because I'm scared to review Quatica. <laughs> and with regret and sadness, it won 35% of the vote. Now, why regret and sadness? I did a video last year, uh, or I guess at the end of 2022, and it went really well. I had a guest appearance from Ro Ramden. I invited her to come on this channel again, but I seem to remember a video where she said she wasn't going to do Twitter anymore. And so I sent her a message on Twitter. And I'm, I'm, this isn't like an act. This like, I'm an old guy who doesn't know how things work. I am an old guy who don't know how things work. So anyways, Ro, if you're out there, I'm sure you would have said more interesting stuff than I'm going to say. Uh, you, you keep doing you and don't let uh, the YouTube bring you down. So anyways, uh, I loved doing that video. Uh, but as I mentioned in my year-end review, it had a very particular impact on my father. So my father, who was at the time 82 years old, you know, he watched most of my videos for the last, you know, three years. He'd watched most of my videos. He would even like watch them on his big ass TV. Like even when I was in the house with him, he would watch me. Can you imagine walking into your dad's house and having you on like an 80 inch TV talking about whatever? But he, I've never seen him that moved by music in his entire life. So he liked music and didn't like music, and he'd have little songs that he liked, and he was a big Frank Zappa fan and all that. But as far as an emotional reaction, Ro Ramden's explanation, in conjunction with my approval and my explanation of the music video of the last album by Quatica, is the most I've ever seen him moved. Now, the spoiler, in case you haven't been following this channel, my dad died in February, okay? So... Uh, a little over a year ago, and it's it's rough. It's rough. You know, morning morning doesn't have any start dates or end dates. It's in the imperfect tense, and uh, I'm still very much in mourning, and that's why I've had a hard time thinking about reviewing this album. <laughs> but like, it's not just that my dad liked the video, or that he liked the album, or that he liked the music video. It was the way that he connected to it. My father understood what Quadica did, and he didn't care that it was some 21-year-old, 20-year-old kid who was famous on YouTube for doing rap battles, somebody who not only knows Logan Paul, but has said no to Logan Paul about something. My dad doesn't know who Logan Paul is. My dad doesn't understand poggers, okay? He doesn't understand it at all. He famously once asked me what Miffle is, because <laughs> he, he saw a sign that said MILF. Yeah, he didn't know what it was, but he understood something about this music, which a lot of young people understood, but in a way that I don't think they could, which was, this is a great piece of art. I'm speaking of, I didn't mean to haunt you, the previous album by Quatica, is a great piece of art talking about the dangers of suicide, the reality of suicide, the hurt of suicide. It was a meaningful anti-suicide message in a way, and it really moved my father. Now, to take it even further back for you here, my dear auditors, to further this uh, asymmetrical parasocial relationship, 
Uh, my grandfather, my father never knew my grandfather, okay? He, my grandfather died when my father was a couple months old. Now, in my family, if there's any of my family members watching, this is a debate. Did my grandfather kill himself? We know that he died in Boston, I believe at Park Street Station, hit by a train. Now, he'd had some eye surgery, and he had an eye patch, and he didn't have good vision, so maybe he didn't see the train, and, and it hit him. Maybe, as some people said who were there, he jumped in front of the tracks. Regardless, irregardless, whatever kind of regardless you want to have, uh, my grandfather died, and I think it was suicide. And I think everybody in my family thinks it's suicide, and I think nobody in my family says it's suicide, which means that this piece of art that this 20-year-old kid from L.A. who was totally poggers made an artwork that helped my father at the end of his life process the sadly defining moment of his life, which happened when he was a few months old, when his father did and did not commit suicide at the exact same time. Okay? That's what Quantica did with his last album, you son of a bitch. <laughs> what are you doing dropping this on me? Do I look like I'm 20? Am I supposed to relate? God damn, no. We're not supposed to relate to this kind of music. This isn't supposed to be that universal. This is supposed to be young, dumb music for young, dumb kids who are trying to figure out where they are on the political spectrum. And I'm an anarcho-capitalist or am I an anchovy capitalist? I don't know what kind of... Maybe maybe I'm a post socialist iconic, ironic... No, that's what it's supposed to be for. You're not supposed to make 83-year-old men who are just about to die contemplate the real nature of life and death and suicide that they have been running away from their entire life. So you, my auditors, when you said, Sky, please review Quatica, did you know what you were doing to me? And the only reason I emphasize this so much is that I'm trying to praise this artist. Like, obviously, I'm joking around, calling him a son of a bitch and all that. Uh, it's not. It's great. That is what art's supposed to do. It's supposed to get you there. And that was the brilliance. And, and apparently, you know, I, through Roe, I found out that, that Quatica very much appreciated this story and that it meant a lot to Quatica, that it meant a lot to my dad. You know, just random stories. You never know. I get stories about how my videos influence people, and I don't even respond to them all the time. But every time I read them, they mean a lot to me. I actually owe a couple messages back to people who have sent me nice messages about how I've helped them get through postgraduate studies. Thinking about you, person from South Africa whose name I forgot. So anyways, but before I even switch the angle for the people who couldn't handle this kind of emotional truth here, uh, smash like bucket, because if you're here watching this, you're one of the real ones. You're a real sweatshirt, okay? You're sweatpants. That means you're one of my real fans. And I'm, I'm going to give you... <laughs> if you do AVAA, that means awesome video as always. I will always heart those comments. That's what that means in the comment section. And I'm now going to give you just one more weird thing, because hey, in for a penny, in for a pound, I always say. My sponsor for this, uh, usually my sponsor is Don't Bet on Sports, which is still a great sponsor, but, but my, my actual sponsor is like, don't, don't take pills. So every night I go to bed, I listen to podcasts. If, if I don't listen to podcasts, I think about death. I think about not existing. Again, Quatica, you're not helping. You're not helping with that album. That's not a great album if you don't want to think about death. You don't want to think about the big questions, but that's fine. So, true story, I literally cannot go to sleep if I'm not listening to someone talking. That's just the way I am, okay? So, I'm listening to a podcast. I think it was an athletic podcast on the Champions League knockout round, okay? I think I'm listening to that. And then there's an interruption in the middle of it. And it says, hi, my name is, and it's a woman's voice that I recognize. And she says her name, and it's a name that I recognize. And she says her husband's name, and it's a name I recognize. Why do I recognize her? Because she's been to my house. Because her kids were friends with my kids, and they used to come over for birthday parties and play and run around in this living room. In this living room, their little daughter Paige would run around and go up and down the stairs and run around. And this person, who I know personally, talked about how Paige died a couple years ago from taking what she thought was Percocet, but it was actually fentanyl. So anyways, I hope to scare you, because of all the ways to commit suicide, that's the stupidest way. Because you're not even really meaning to do it, 
but it's just the reality. If you're taking pills and you don't know what they are, that might happen. So anyway, that didn't help me get to sleep at all. <laughs> Here I was listening. <laughs> Real Sociedad really didn't have enough of an attack. And then doo, 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 ad break. Someone that you know actually dying. All right, here we go. Let's go. You ready? You ready for me to switch the angle so everyone can join in? Hey, everybody. You missed a whole bunch of personal stuff. Let's talk about Scrapyard. It's really hard. I'm from Boston. I really want to pronounce it Scrapyard. Hey, everybody. Let's go listen to some Scrapyard. Now, what is Scrapyard? It was a whole thing where I missed it, right? The Quatica has been releasing albums. I talk a lot about how I'm not really into parasocial relationships with musicians if I can avoid it. Like, I don't mind social relationships, but the, social, the parasocial aspects of it. So I guess he was, like, releasing an album or an EP every couple of weeks, a different kind of style. And what I like about this, knowing this at the very least, is he is telling you, if you skipped the last 10 minutes, you missed the part where I explained the emotional resonance of his last album, that what I call, for short, ghost album... The Ghost album had scope and grandeur and emotional resonance and it pulled you to the depths of hell and lifted you to the heights of heaven, right? So this, by having this little release strategy, little tiny songs, little tiny songs, this and that, little Lucy's, not a whole pack, it freed us and it freed him of the concept album. Now, if you're a new music fan, that's cool. You most statistically, you're going to be pretty long. Long? Statistically, you're going to be pretty long. Actually, with the amount of vaping that's going on, your lungs aren't looking pretty. Jesus, boomer. Uh, statistically, you're pretty young. So you weren't really around for the concept albums. Even I wasn't. But there's a whole flurry of artists who released concept albums. Albums that were start to finish one basic idea and then were filled out. In particular, I'm thinking of The Who, and I'm thinking of Pink Floyd. And I remember having a conversation with my oldest brother, Ward, who I learned most of what I know about music from. And he told me, that, like, yeah, concept albums are great, but often bands can't get out of them. Like, they start making them, and then they can't stop. They can't just go back to making independent songs and independent music. So this is great, because as awesome as I Didn't Mean to Haunt You was... Sorry I Didn't Mean to Haunt You? I don't even know the title. The Ghost Album, as I, as I said previously, it's a hard listen for me. It's getting easier, by the way. I, I re-listened to it uh, for this review. It's getting easier. It's getting easier. Time. Time. Um, but Quatica is explaining, okay, you don't have to do this every time. And that's a beautiful thing. When you release an album which is perfect, as the Ghost Album was, you don't want to have to do that again. You, you, it's okay if you release an album and it's a bunch of little songs and it's super awesome and it's super cool and it all comes together and it's a little bit in this style, a little bit in that style, and let's just put them all together. So, you know, here I am again. And, and I know that part of the value of me doing these videos... Value. Jesus. What kind of anarcho-capitalist am I? What kind of commu communist leftist am I? And I'm talking about the value of my videos. But I think part of what makes it interesting is that a lot of young people watch somebody who's literally twice the age of Quatica. So if Quatica lived his entire life one more time, he would be my age, right? That's pretty wild. I remember 2000 when he was born. I was 23. It was awesome. Yeah, it was okay. As I, I like to say to young people all the time, just hold on. <laughs> life gets better once you've been in some therapy, uh, once you're in your 30s and 40s, it's better. Your back hurts, but it's better. Of course, my back hurt when I was in my 20s, too. Uh, what's that thing? Scoliosis. Anyways, I know part of the fun is having an old guy validating your music. Like, oh my God, this dude, <laughs> this dude remembers the Clinton administration, and he's talking about Quantica's music. Rad! And that's true. But I just, I want to just let you know, you know, it's just... It, what the actual value of what I'm bringing isn't that I'm an old person who sees that it's good. It's that hopefully you see that it's not new. Like, I'm able to listen to this music and say, I, this is not my generation, this is not for me. 
but this is universal feelings of youth, of alienation, of love, of yearning, of desire. This is, this is absolutely what was being made in the 90s, which was absolutely what was being made in the 80s and was in the 70s and then in the 60s, right? This is the power and the glory of pop music and it's all the same and I can hear it and I can hear the differences and I can point out the differences, but I can also just say, hey, <laughs> This is just what good music is, and I recognize that, and I see that, and I'm not too scared of the fact that I'm still, not going to lie, super anxious about the whole pronoun thing. I looked it up. It's what it said on Wikipedia, and Wikipedia is usually right, but sometimes wrong. So, I don't know. You know what this, you know this music is? It's really pretty. And I, I'm sorry, calling something pretty is not appreciated on this album, but it's really pretty. The songs are very moving. And they're not moving in that same ghostly, haunting way of uh, the Ghost album. It's like all these beautiful songs about insecurity, about shaky love, about the need for honesty in a superficial world, about the need for honesty in a world where you're constantly presenting a version of yourself which might not be the real you. And that's what makes Quatica, I think, the voice of a generation. I mean, obviously not the whole generation, but as I said in the last video, he's like the internet kid made good, you know, based on what I read in that in that that Wikipedia thing. You know, he's just a kid who played a lot of video games, went to a lot of soccer practice, and liked rap music, and made videos, and just goofed around with it. And it's it's the reason that I do this channel is that I believe that human genius is everywhere. That's the whole point in case you wonder like why why do why what is my point on earth my point is to spread the basic idea that human genius is everywhere that's why i love hip hop and why i love sports radio listen to sports radio you hear some of the least educated people on earth discussing things at the highest possible level that's why i love hip hop because it is the voice of the voiceless people who have absolutely nothing who've been put down and are put in a position to where they could not possibly go anywhere or say anything and they managed to create the most important art form in the history of civilization, okay? That is human genius. But maybe it's easier to see human genius in the form of a 23-year-old kid or a 20-year-old kid from Atlanta who grew up and surrounded by gang violence and the crack epidemic. What about a 23-year-old kid from LA who gets rides to soccer practice, right? Who plays a lot of video games and watches a lot of YouTube. Is there genius there? Is it possible? Is it possible that you watching this have genius in you? You who listen to Quatica and, and have this feeling? And that Quatica gets to be that for those people. The same way that Bob Dylan was this 18, 19, 20 year old kid writing the most amazing music possible and all the baby boomers could go, look at that disaffected young guy. Wow. Did he just write only a pawn in their game? He did. He just wrote the best song about racism that will probably ever be written, at least by somebody who isn't directly suffering from it. He did? And he's not old enough to graduate college? All right, that feeling? That's awesome. Longing, yearning, regret, wonder, grief. It's all in these lyrics, and that's to say nothing of the music. This is the problem with me not reviewing this album completely. So I, I had to decide, am I going to do the video downstairs during the baby's nap, or am I going to listen to it one more time at the gym and record it upstairs in the bedroom? I don't like the bedroom stu studio as much. I like this. There's a little bit more space, a little bit more natural light, but also <laughs> I can't, can't, can't take any more Aquatica. It's too painful. So there's a little, a lot of details on this, but that's going to be my compliment. Even if I spent like I don't know, another week with this music, and I tried to write down all the little production details, all the little dynamic plays, all the little layers and layers and layers, all the atmosphere. This guy is an absolute master producer. and He's just on his computer, I think. I don't think Rick Rubin is kicking around in the back. I don't think Nigel Godrich is sitting over there saying, Oi, maybe you ought to change the phase a little bit. I think he's just a kid who's just doing it himself. And the genre, that's the beauty. That's the beauty. These Zoomers, these goddamn Zoomers who don't go to Applebee's or Red Robin, they have figured out 
something that just we needed to figure out earlier. Shame on you, Xers. Why didn't we destroy music genres? We could have done it. I mean, I guess we tried and we made Limp Biscuit. <laughs> Way to go. Way to go, Xers. You made rap rock. <laughs> it's terrible. It's, this is like this most agreeable mixture of bedroom rock, bedroom pop, and hip hop. Bedroom hip hop rock is what I want to call it. Actually, I don't. It sounds really stupid. It doesn't really matter. What I love is that you can hear in it both a computer kid with all these bleeps and boops. And kids never play music today, and the only time they ever pick up a guitar is to play Guitar Hero. And you also hear a kid who clearly has been driven to some music lessons by their parents or an autodidact who clearly played a lot of guitar and who clearly thinks about music at the great high levels. That's the joy, is that Quatica is simultaneously just a bleepin' bloopin' hip-hop kid who's just while well, at the same time, dude's got chops, dude knows how to play, dude knows how to produce, dude knows how to actually do the stuff that the dudes actually have to do. I really regret starting to make this voice, but actually now I'm starting to think it's kind of funny, but now I can't break out of it. One second, I gotta break out. <clears throat> Another thing this album throws in, so because it has all these different genres, that's sort of intentional, I think, this scrapyard idea. Oh yeah, by the way, do you know how I write papers? Like whether I'm writing papers for college or I'm writing papers uh, to be published? I have, uh, I have the name of the article, right? So let's say the article is Quatica, right? So if I'm writing an article about Quatica, I'd have the article. And then sometimes I write like pages that I don't want to keep, but like I worked on them. And so I cut out and then I paste them into a separate document that is called the name of the article underscore scraps. I've done that for 20 years, okay? Every paper, Baudelaire underscore scraps, Proust underscore scraps, Moliere underscore scraps, right? And it's beautiful because like I've never opened up a scraps document. I've never gone back. I've never looked at it. I've never tried to see what I wrote. Who knows if I wrote the most beautiful things, but I just couldn't let go of them. So I love the usage of the word scrap. Now, of course, in a different context, I, I, I got distracted from what I was saying. That's fine. In a different context, Scrapyard, going back to the title, in the 60s, there was actually a fair amount of music that was made by boomers. And a lot of times when they would try to express their feeling of alienation about the consumer world that they were living in, sort of proto-anti-consumerist messages, they would often record in a scrapyard. I mean, a scrapyard itself represents the detritus, the trash of society being sort of collected and turned into something new, which I guess is what this is. Going back to the point before I got distracted, listen, I have undiagnosed ADD. You might too. M maybe, maybe my style isn't jerky at all. Maybe it's smooth as smooth peanut butter. So going back to the different styles of all this junkyard, this scrapyard stuff being put together, as far as I can tell, there's like a rock folk style a sort of Playboy Cardi, whole lot of red rage rap style. But then there's a lot of soul, like R&B stuff in here too, which I find quite enjoyable and which I will point out. Before I actually start reviewing the album, maybe I didn't need to listen to it again. I have a lot to say. First of all, I need to move this because there's some light coming in off of the music stand that I use for my camera. <laughs> I'm going blind as hell. Uh, this is on Dead Air Records, which... Uh, you know, just, they haven't missed yet. So they just keep putting out great music. We need to be paying attention because there's some people who are curating. Record companies are bad, but not all record companies are bad. All right, let me give you an example of the song. Uh, uh, click above the Talbot Sculpture to hear the song easier. Now this, I think, is everything that I like about this album all in one song. It starts off with like this nice soft piano. At first I heard it, I'm like, oh, this is like that Chopin song that YouTubers play over everything all the time. And then I actually realized the place where he inserted the blade by Black Country New Road, it's not exactly the same, but it's close enough that I would imagine, this is what I predict, I predict Aquatica heard that and didn't 
actually think about it for a long time and then would hear it again right now with me pointing it out and then go, oh, damn, that is close. I don't think it's plagiarism or even close. I'm not, I'm not going to. I'm not going to H-bomber on you guys. Um, but, but anyways. But then but it doesn't matter because that's, that's the great thing. The piano isn't what really matters because then this cello comes in. Where did this cello come from? Who's playing cello? I used to play cello. I was never very good. When I'd play in an orchestra, I would play... <laughs> just, I'm getting personal. I would actually intentionally play that the bow was not on the strings to make sure I didn't screw everybody up because I never practiced. I didn't even know how to read music. I was just sitting there hours just staring. Anyways, beautiful cello. Very mournful, very cool. But we're not done. We had piano. We had cellos. But then we have guitars. And this, this is a guitar song. Very sweet, jazzy guitar chords. And then this beautiful singing, I want you because you're easier than nothing. This album does not have one theme. Like, I didn't mean to haunt you, right? It doesn't have one theme. It has multiple themes. And this is one of them, sort of this weird love stories, unpleasant sort of broken love stories. At times, the voice is slightly manipulated. Sometimes it's kind of got auto-tune. And it feels like you never know if Quatica is trying to go for kind of a hyper-poppy thing or, on this case, a kind of a soul sound. Again, this is that R&B thing that I'm talking about. Maybe I'm not in love, it's just the thought of you. Hey, that, that, that is a very painful thing to realize. <sighs> Anyways, I, I remember um, my college girlfriend. Um, I loved her, you know, but I was so young, you know, it was a weird kind of love. And I would actually write her poems. I wrote her sonnets in French. Sorry, ladies, I'm taken. And I realized something while I was writing her sonnets in French after the Star of Ronsard, that they weren't about her. And that's where I realized like, love poems are not about the people they're written about. They're about the person who's writing them. And they always have been. So I love this kind of lucidity that, that he's writing with. Okay, it's hard to explain. Maybe I'm so in love, I followed the open arms that bury me from above. Total indecision, lack of clarity, he's not rhyming. Some lyrics don't rhyme, and that gives them strength. That's what the case is here, because sometimes when you rhyme, it's not a good time. Everything sounds fake, like a plastic lime. And he gets sort of, sort of spoken, and like almost like, it's almost like he's sort of rap singing, talking, and then gets more and more soul. And then there's, this is what I'm talking about. I need more time with this album. I'm not going to give myself weird sort of de, 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 de sounds in the back of the second chorus. And then the second verse gets full on 90s R&B style. It's so hard to admit that I wanted you. I was busy being busy. I was busy doing everything in my strength not to acknowledge you. I miss being alone the way I was alone before all the, res all the resentment had gotten through. He's just some 23-year-old kid from L.A. who got driven to soccer practice. And he's writing lyrics as good. It's awesome. Dylan was just some kid from Duluth, you know? And I'm not saying Aquatica is Dylan, but I'm saying he's closer to Dylan than I am. <laughs> he's closer to Dylan than most people. Who knows? Operated at my prettiest, you said it would be okay. And then there's like flute. There's a lot of flute on this album, kind of 70s soul flute. And this is the thing that technology has brought us. Because, you know, I used to make music when I was Quatica's age, and I had a four-track, and that was it. And you're stuck. You're just stuck. But the, the, the amount of layers and textures you can build in, it's the skill of the present and the skill of the future is discernment, is choice, not location. It used to be like finding something was the trick. Now everything is available, and you can find everything. So what you have to do instead is you have to figure out how to use things with discernment. And that's perhaps the thing that he does the best that is hardest to describe how he uses the flute the right amount. Too much? No. Not enough? No. The right amount? Yes. Then the third chorus is like some chanting, like some Gregorian chanting and whelping sounds, and then a full auto-tune, because you're easier than nothing. What a dagger through the heart is a lyric, I love you because you're more than nothing, and it's moving, and it's pretty, and you think it's all over, and then he tricks you, because all of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes a tinned, Casio Bossa Nova beat. Old keyboards, right? The keyboards from the 80s you used to buy like places called Radio Shack. God, no one's watching this knows what Radio Shack is. It's all good. 
you can press a button and the button with different rhythms. This is the Casanova beat with this nice jazzy guitar. And then you realize that beat could have been playing the whole way through. Maybe he just took it out. Oh my God, he was there the whole time. How did he do that? How did he do that, right? And then it's like a full on jazzy guitar outro. So that right there, my description of easier is exactly the kind of description I could give of every song, but I'm not going to because I literally cannot emotionally handle this album more than I already have. And because, hey, you get it. First track is called Dust Cutter, bitch in title, nice bass note, this weird like sound to start things off. Wow, 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 wow. Some falsetto singing, more rap stuff, great hard bass. At times the drums are great, at times the bass is great, at times the guitar is great. Sometimes these things really jump out. Uh, just a very weird wording and unclear what he's saying, but really just this bass line hitting so hard. Apparently this was on the, the vinyl of um, I Never Meant to Haunt You. <laughs> I keep calling, I'm just going to call it the ghost album. <laughs> I mean, I just, I'm just going to keep making it weirder and weirder. Hey, if you have a long title to your album, that's, your, that's on you. And it makes sense because this does feel more connected to that. This does feel like it's in that zone. And I don't know where all these things come from because part of what makes Quatica a great voice of this generation is that he has such a parasocial relationship with a lot of his fans, which is part of being a modern superstar. Now, if there's any other way to drive that home, we could just talk about the music video, which is directed by Dev Lemons. Dev Lemons, who is another great young musician who knows how important it is to be in a positive and interesting parasocial relationship with your fans. I, mean, I feel like I know her just from watching the Dev Lime stuff. I don't, <laughs> you know, that's the magic of the thing, right? Anyway, so it's fun having her do the video and it's in sign language and it's great. We're trying to start a sign language minor at my college and I'm going to send this to the sign language instructor saying, hey, here's some great music that emphasizes the importance of sign language collab culture that's part of this generation okay so i've been talking about my sadness to my dad about my dad dying and about that and this is the saddest i've gotten because i know that if he were still alive i'd go down and visit him and he'd be eating his favorite meal which was <laughs> bread with raw onions on it i called it onion bread it's rough <laughs> rough being an 82 year old bachelor uh and I, he would ask me things in the video like from the video, usually from like three months ago. I have no idea what he's talking about. But anyways, he would say collab. Is that just the same thing as a collaboration? And I would try to explain to him how the term collab and collaboration don't quite have the same meaning. There's a certain modern meaning of collab, which is sort of like the difference between like with versus X. Anyways, I get into that whole conversation and I miss talking about that stuff with my dad. Doesn't matter. Next track's called A La Carte. Uh, featuring Brakens, Bracantes, Bracante. Uh, and what I realized here is Quatica has so many different voices. So sometimes he's sort of this emo rapper guy, but when he's singing, he reminds me a lot of Mick Jones of The Clash. I don't know if that's on purpose. So many great layers, even in Robert Smith of The Cure at times. It builds with some claps. Some of the stuff seems to be about the record company and being upset about having to make an LLC. Other stuff is just this, this great line. My favorite poem was the one I read to you from the teleprompter on the tongue of my shoe. My flashbacks are a touch more resolute, declaring thumb war in the pockets of my suit. I don't quite get what it all means, but I like it. I like this idea because later he says, you can have my tongue, just promise you take it a la carte. You know, so a la carte means not all together. I think I think a la carte is a very important expression for our modern days. First of all, because so many companies are trying to sell us bundles of stuff that we don't want. Like, good news, we're going to charge you 10 more dollars for something you don't want. Good news, everybody. You got the tire bundle. So you don't just buy tires. You have tires plus rims plus color protection. So you actually saved like $100 on that. That's 50 more dollars than if you just bought the tires, but you got color protection. So I don't know what more do you want. Uh, but the other thing is that with our on-demand life, as our life becomes more and more on-demand, where we get to decide what we want, supply and demand, on-demand, all that stuff, we are in general becoming much more a la carte. So we take things from people and we take people and we try to isolate the things we want 
while excising the things we don't. It's a problem in our society that we're so a la carte. And it's also a problem that we're so bundled. Jesus Christ, I'm getting, I'm getting very philosophical. Philosophical. My favorite kind of dinosaur. Pretty privileged. Oh my God, this guy's killing me. He's killing me. He's killing me. Why did you call me pretty? That's the question. It's hard. It's hard. Because he, 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 feels, he feels bad about himself. Sorry. That was my daughter telling me that, that she's awake now. Good for her. Not my baby. I have a daughter as well. But I love this because, I mean, beyond the blown out drum sounds and the backward sounds and even sort of like a Beach Boy style post-chorus, all the different things, all the guitar runs that are happening here, I could describe the music forever, but the fact that he's uncomfortable with being called pretty is very beautiful, very relatable. Um, I understand on some level that I, I am an attractive man. I feel uncomfortable saying it, but I understand that on some level, okay? Um, but I'm filled with self-doubt, self-loathing, and, and not a small amount of uh, inability to see myself as I really am. So, like, especially when I was, you know, younger, a little bit less, you know, middle-aged guy guy, um, the more someone would tell me that I was handsome, the more I would distrust them and sort of hate them and want to tell them to just fuck off. And uh, that's what the song's about. And so I relate to it. So, yeah. It's messed up. Even if I... Okay, then we get the stamp that even if I tried... He's just having fun with it, you know? That's why I like this album. Because it's not actually as heavy. Okay, it doesn't reach the heights of I didn't mean to haunt you because that album is just how the hell are you going to do that? You know? But not everything can be The Wall. Not everything can be Tommy. You got to have... Who by numbers, okay? Just almost like drill, like bass. And, and what I like about this is the way he uses rap music, I think is an important way. Because he's... I'm not saying he's making it safe for white people. Because he's not. He's not actually being a culture vulture. But what he's doing is he's taking a lot of the elements that a lot of people like about, white, about rap music. And he's sort of inverting them. So he's using hip-hop bravado, you know. I won't miss. Even if I tried, I swear to God, I walked in the room, you'd barely exist. He's doing that, f that bravado thing, but it's faux bravado. It's fake bravado. The reality is he feels quite small. Now, that's the reality of rap, right? That's why rap is so fascinating, is it's a bunch of people who feel like they're nothing telling you that they're everything. That's, that's the strength of the music. But it's hard to understand that if you're just listening to it. You just think, wow, this guy thinks that he is the best in all of the state, right? And when in reality, he thinks he's nothing. But the fact that you can take that and make that clear, he's sort of recontextualizing it and using a lot of the soundscape and a lot of the feelings without trying to take it away from anybody, just using it as a mode of expression. The guitars here are like searching, trying to find stuff, like just looking, and then it gets like super epic and I swear to God there's bongos are there bongos in here are there ethereal bizarre pedal steel guitar sounds in here is that what's happening is there some high singing over what I I looked at my notes and I wrote blaring weirdness <laughs> I don't even remember what that means and, and then the amazing sound at the end is this guitar reaching resolution. The whole song of like loss and insecurity, it ends with this. What's it to him? So many chords. You know, whenever I, I play guitar and I try and write a song, sometimes I just feel like I'm so sick of writing one, four, five guitar songs, Finnerty. I feel I'm just, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to write some kind of song that's more interesting. I'm going to have eight chords. All right, now I'm going to sing over it. It doesn't work. This is like, what if that happened? What if you did that, but it works? <laughs> There's too many chords, but they work really well. And they're really nicely augmented by some individual guitars here. The drums come in. Hey, is this my favorite song? I think it might be. Do you like guacamole? I think this might be my favorite song. Just because the way the drums come in. Does he have a drummer? Is he doing all... Okay, listen, this is, I'm going to tell you the truth. If this man is playing the drums, I'm going to be sad. Because that is too much. It's just too much. I, I felt the same way about Quantic, But fortunately... Quantic, another great bedroom singer, 
whose name begins with QUA, has a drummer. So whew, I felt okay. But, <laughs> but if Quantica is playing drums on this album, I don't. I think my jealousy is going to be too great. Album's trash. Zero out of ten. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But I love the song. I love the usage of the drums. Even if he's not playing the drums, his usage of the drums is so good for their dynamism. I'd like to hide a little less. I'd like to cry a little more. That's what we need. We need more men telling other men to cry more and hide less. This, the emotional resonance of these tinkling keyboards behind, it just builds up and the drum sounds get all super compressed and there's these, all these different sections. And I think there's a little fake block, a little synth wood block there, and then at a certain point it becomes a full-on mosh pit song. Hey, I don't think I actually needed to listen to this album one more time. I feel like I'm getting all my thoughts out here. This is good. You don't know me like that, is the next track. Airy synthesizer sounds, full-on altered voice. The term I used was a bratty emo Michael Jackson. This is the most hyper pop in terms of its vocal production, but it's so... You know, earnestness is the trick, right? In the J Reggie world of terminally online people, irony and earnestness just interchange so much. And if you're 100% earnest, it's unlistenable. If you're 100% ironic, it's unlistenable. So the trick is like doing this, like how to make emo rap without being emo rap, how to have powerful emotions, it's all there. I make it look effortless. Again, oh my God. That's, uh, okay, okay, you know what? Hey, hey, you're here. I'm gonna get, phil I'm gonna get phil phil philosophical again, okay? Effort, grind set. It's a huge thing that we have in this world. The general belief that the harder you work, the better of a person you are. I'd like to quote that new Chromio album, which only like 5% of you voted for. Sometimes rest is better than sex, okay? <laughs> Beautiful lyric. You gotta check out that album if you haven't. I don't know when I'm gonna review it, but it's awesome. Our culture tells us to have the grind set and to work, 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 work. But effortless, easier, there's a theme of a lack of effort. And it is true that if you work less hard, except the guy who's working too hard on this channel because it doesn't matter, I keep working here. Uh, <laughs> The grind set I have to have to do these videos as often as I do them. It's fine. It's fine. It, it's not great. And so he uses this faux bravado. And it's very clear he's listening to, to Playboy Cardi, whole lot of red, insane, booming bass. And again, it's just it's not cultural appropriation because he's using these landscapes and he's not trying to do what they do. He's trying to use some of those tools to do something similar to what they do but he's expressing different emotions, different feelings. And he allows us to listen to this music and connect to it in a different way. Because I listen to the Playboy Cardi album, I can't relate to it. I'm not saying it's not relatable. I'm saying I, I take my shirt off, hoes have no trouble breathing, okay? Seriously. Like, I haven't had a single instance in my entire life of my shirt being taken off and hose not breathing anymore. I don't slap, I don't slime, I, I don't bang, I don't deal, I don't sip on scissorp. So I can't relate to that stuff. But that doesn't mean that that's not valuable, right? I mean, a whole lot of Red's masterpiece album, I've said it since the week it came out. But it is nice to have some of these tools with things that connects a little bit more to how I feel and how I process life. Like, why not have both those things? It's awesome. Some great detuned guitar, and I love that it ends too soon. And then we get to the song Way Too Many Friends. Drums and guitar playing. More straightforward rock. <clears throat> this seems to be about the difficulty of not getting back to people. Um, I like it. I like that idea. <clears throat> because he probably does have too many friends. You know, he's, he's a rock star, YouTube star. You know, everyone wants to be his friend. And, and I bet he has real friends, but also he probably has a lot more friends than he would if he wasn't such an interesting person to be friends with. Don't call you enough, not as much as I intend. I don't say it enough, but I'll thank you in the end. Great backwards drum sounds and a little bit of a flute. And then I saw this video and it upset me because he looked like Jack Harlow, right? I mean, not like a dead ringer, but had the kind of like other Kevin hair and like, so like, I got scared, because like, if Quatica gets like big, 
if he gets like Jack Harlow big, then that would suck. Or maybe it wouldn't. Hey. Anyways. Am I, call <laughs> am I calling him pretty? I, I, I don't know. Another thing I like about this song is that it reminds me uh, spiritually, like with the repetition of the lyric, I have too many friends, something that sounds good. Something that sort of reminds me, like I think if you put this on a playlist next to Every day is the worst day of my life, the worst day of my life by uh, the Lemon Twigs, uh, it would go quite well together with sort of the repetition of these kind of over-the-top, absurdly funny, but also heartfelt lyrics. Guess who? Uh, just madness. I mean, more whole lot of red, Cardi style, not full rage, just incomprehensibility, just super cool high singing. Again, almost drill like bass. So apparently he was a very good soccer player, Quatica. And as you may or may not know, I've become something of a. I care a lot about soccer. It's the thing I've started caring about in the last couple of years. I've sort of cared about, you know, I used to watch Marseille when I lived in Marseille, so I, I, I have a team, you know. So I think this is the answer. What is Quatica's team? I think it's Liverpool. Yeah, true. I play with that money, parentheses, Mane, in your pitch, like my name, Salah. So Sadio Mane used to be, used to be on Liverpool before he sold out and went and played in uh, Saudi Arabia. And then Salah currently plays for Liverpool, but he's probably also going to sell out and go to, go to Saudi Arabia later. Uh, actually kind of rapping here. And uh, for, the, for the record, I'm, I'm cool with Liverpool. Uh, under my skin, another style. So remember how I said I haven't reviewed McG yet. I haven't. Uh, I do love Dijon, and this has that kind of Dijon feeling with the guitars and the singing. That's with this high and the vulnerability. Who's making all these noises? Is he making all these noises? Is he playing drums? Still, still, I don't know. Why would you come to me right after I build a fence? A lot about. A lot of the album seems to be about vulnerability and fighting vulnerability and struggling with vulnerability and projecting vulnerability and projecting invulnerability. Whew, there's a lot to it here. And it's funny because he's talking about being under your skin and so it's just random. But I, I watch movies. Again, the ADD thing, <laughs> it's real. The first time I listened to an album, I listened to it on elliptical at the gym while watching a movie with the sound off. I happen to be watching The Duke, which I've never seen while listening to this album. And right as he's saying, under your skin, the lady is, is uh, reading uh, from the Baba Duke book, what's underneath. So anyways, those things go together. I tried to find a clip. <laughs> Did you know they, they're Australian? <laughs> I had no idea. I, I, I've only watched the movie. So many great sounds. Is it like weird? So uh, I grew up, you know, in the eighties, right? And, um, my, my parents were pretty playful, my dad especially. And so every once in a while, he would buy these weird little things, actually from Radio Shack now, I think about it, like weird little sound makers, like electronic sound makers that did little cool things, like wee -goo -doo -doo -doo. this has some of those sounds in there. Being yourself almost reminds me, okay, my theory is, like many people, he heard the song I Can Feel It Coming in the Air Tonight by Phil Collins, and it's like, okay, there's my starting point. Very dark, low drones and beeps and boops, far away singing. I remember. So much taste, though. Like, such a tasteful approach to everything. At a certain point, these, like, mechanical and eerie sounds approach. I'd switch. I'd give anybody else. I wish you could be yourself. When I talk about lyrics on this channel, there are a few things I appreciate more than the kind of simplicity that makes you go, anybody could say that. Anybody could have a lyric, I wish you could be yourself, but oh my God, the way he delivers it, the way that it's phrased, and no one else has a song that said, I wish you could be yourself. And when you think about the world that we live in, the voice of a generation, it's so overwhelming, the, 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 the ability to project someone that you're not. And I don't just mean catfishing, okay? I don't mean catfishing. I mean like, like catfishing, like what if you're catfishing for your whole life? What if the line between the catfish and the cat person is erased? What if how you present yourself is inaccurate, but that's the only way you've ever presented yourself? That's the reality, actually, for an increasing amount of people. And Quatica made a song that I think relates to that. 
And then it ends with a great skipping and bad connection. You tried that thing when you're human. Maybe this is my favorite track because the lyric, it's time to give up on being human. This is so relatable. This is so relatable. How many times in my life have I felt this? It's time to give up on being human. I've done my best imitation of being a human being for so freaking long, I would like to just pull my skin back and be the weird little cat person I know I am on the inside, <laughs> you know? Like, it's exactly how so many people feel, that it's just like the effort that it takes, especially in the morning, but not only in the morning, the amount of times when I'm at work and I'm at some kind of meeting or something and someone asks me a question or they have a flow chart up there and they ask for questions or they call on me and they say, okay, Sky, why don't you tell us your name, what department you're from, and one fun thing about the summer. And I have to dig deep and go, oh, I want to say, hey, fuck you, I'm not doing that. This thing sucks. Oh, uh, goodbye. Instead, I go, oh, uh, yeah, uh, my name is Sky, Department of Modern Languages and Cultures. Uh, one funny thing about this summer. Well, you know, um, I had a really, really good uh, soup in, uh, on the Hungarian-Serbian border in a, in a little city called Seged. It's very nice. Some of the best paprika in the world comes from there. Yeah, it was a Transylvanian pork knuckle soup. That's cute. Now, that's what I do when I'm being human, but inside... I will say this has a weird, eerie sound, and I, I listen to this album on headphones and not. The cool thing is it, it holds up not on headphones. I mean, music like this very clearly is not, it's not made by people in a... I actually had a practice space in Los Angeles, a place called Vicious Reasoning Studios, owned by Rex and Zoom. Very, very funny. Probably, probably to heroin everybody in that place except for me but it doesn't matter allegedly this is not music for practice spaces right this is music for computers and for having the headphones on and all that so the fact that the album works as headphones because oh my god there's a little tiny sound on the right here that's just right there but i also just played it over my headphones and while i was listening to this my baby 16 months old i was just going she was like singing along to it. So I'm not, hey, am I going to cry thinking about my daughter who my father never really got to know singing along to the last artist that my father really loved? No, you're, you're going to cry. Toby's going to cry. He's sitting on the couch. Opened his eyes on me. I just love the electronic drone sounds and like just the way, just how <laughs> he really went for it, right? He went for it on this singing. He wanted to make sure that you knew that when he says that he tried being human, that he really wasn't cool with it. And so he like starts laughing, like a sort of, <laughs> you made an exception for someone and look at where it got you. Nice try. Right? That's the problem. It's a beautiful idea that, that he tried to be human. In theory, he's saying he's trying to be human because of a relationship, but I don't think so. I think he's talking to him. This is music that I think is written from the perspective of somebody staring angrily into the mirror. <laughs> That's why it switches between first and second person, between first person pronouns and second person pronouns, I and you. You did that thing when you were a human, and it ends with, you're going to be something else. Going back to the question of who are we, who's the real person, more awesome drums, very emotional back half, just gorgeous compressed keyboard sounds, and this cool descending melody, so many little things. There's birds, little tiny birds in here. Next track is called Guide Dog. What, where did this come from? Okay, there's been rock on this album, but this is just rock. He could play this at Vicious Reasoning Studios with Rex and Zoom. He could. Almost like smog, microphones-y stuff. Just straight folk rock. No rap at all. And these lyrics are beautiful. They're sort of, I'll be your... Oh my, oh my God. I don't know what a goofball I am. <laughs> I was going to say, it's like, I'll be your mirror, just because I know where this album is, because I listen to it every Sunday. But I have it behind me all the time. It's been on every video. I'm a goof-a-doof. Anyways, uh, I love this idea, you know, how I describe you when you're not around, you should see for yourself, and I'll find you confident ground, I'll be yourself, I want to be your guide dog. 
Speaking of emotional music, I'll Be Your Mirror is a song which is capable of making me cry, in particular when I when I sing it to my wife, because often people don't perceive of my wife as gentle and kind as she really is, and so I help her to see that. And so I'm able to see the beauty inside that she doesn't know other people can see, you know, the kindness and the sweetness. And like, I want to be a guide dog, right? Like that, what a beautiful image that like, you're so blinded by self-hatred that you can't even see the beauty that you are, right? It's, uh, it's awesome. I'll be there myself. Do you trust me to be your guide dog? Oh, he got me one more time by explaining the trust. It's not being your mirror is one thing. Hey, Lou, Nico, great job. Being a mirror is tough, but a mirror is just a reflection. A guide dog is responsible. If you're going to be a guide dog, you have to see what the other person can't. And I love all this mixed up because remember how I said this album isn't unified? It's not. But it sort of is, because it goes back to that same theme that I'm talking about, like thinking that you're not pretty, not being able to trust people, needing to be yourself, thinking that you're human. It almost feels like the whole album can be seen as somebody staring into the mirror and yelling at themselves and then hugging themselves and loving themselves and forgiving themselves and getting angry with themselves all over again. And then like having that relationship with, and then removing the mirror and actually they were talking to their girlfriend or boyfriend, I don't know. And then they close it down and they're talking to their self and the, the you and the me and it all gets confounded into this whole kind of soup of like doubt and reassurance and the desire for comfort and to be held. There's Toby. See him? It's my guide dog. <laughs> Yesterday he uh, he uh, started barking at the wind. So I had to come down here. I had to be his... I'm usually his thunder buddy, but I had to be his wind buddy last night. So, so my back's all messed up. Texas Blue featuring Kevin Abstract. I hope you didn't skip to this song because um, it's not that it's not good. It's just that don't skip to the features because it's... It's great, and I, I, I know Kevin Abstract's great, and he's, he works really well with Quatica. I think they could do a whole album together. Beautiful little piano stuff, little tiny waltz, the kind of music, piano notes that you can play, more birds from behind, apparently some kind of love story here, scratches on your back, sagging baggy jeans, X-rated preview, feel the wind coming, are you going to let it take you to? Nice sort of singing together, all like I'll Be Honest. The song actually strongly reminds me of I'll Make Love to You by Boys to Men and more flute and so it's not that it's not a great song but that it's sort of no hey i take that back it's the whole point it's that it scraps it's the scrapyard so it doesn't fit with the whole theme i've been trying to force a unified theme on it you know i'll be your mirror i'll be your guide dog this the, no it's not just that it's all these other things as well which gives me the freedom to not like freak out and have it fall apart in my brain. All right. So these are my Patreons. I'm going to do one more little secret trick after I show the Patreons. But uh, uh, these are my Patreons. They give me money so that I can buy music. I really like this album. I'll probably get it, eh, you know, when the morning's over. Um, I got a new super sponsor, Vukivic. So thank you. I forgot to I find space for you up there, but I'm going to figure that out. I have my tape, tape dispenser downstairs. So thank you to all them. And to close things out, I'm going to read one of my dad's poems. Because I feel like it. My dad was a pain in the ass. Loved him. Uh, he thought he was a lot of things. And the main thing he was was a poet. And when I told him that, <laughs> he would get mad. So here's a poem from him called Sermons for the Church of Is. <clears throat> Accepting admonition of is not. To celebrate the is that is. The flipper and the flipped. Now and already past being present, so we freeze in prose of perfect. Three equally perfect tenses in terror with Parmenides. See what is pure may be good, but is only as necessary as the observers need. With a whole ding and sitch left over, cell slash soul to sold cell inmate, human being is a biological thing. Protein, carbon material, DNA software, 
self-differentiated, and thus reproductive. Till next time, there's Gamma.